2.5 million for two years, big giant empty building owned by a whole board of individuals, like 10 guys or eight guys, and um, I assume that they were all successful guys. I don't know, I never met them. And after two years of having no bites, this building sitting there, they dropped the price to 2.5 million, and all of a sudden activity started to go on it. Well, I went to take a look at it. I was competing for this building amongst a lot of uh, big wig companies, Walgreens and that kind of thing. And uh, these guys all have contracts uh, that would allow, they were all intending to knock the building down and build something else. So all their contracts had contingencies to make sure that, uh, you know, <clears throat> they had various outs for themselves, I assume. Every contract in a commercial green is different. They're not like par greens or residential. They had outs for themselves in the event that they didn't get the approvals to build whatever it was that they wanted to build there, or Walgreens or whatever other thing they wanted to build. I was the only individual there who was planning to use the building as it was. And uh, so I went in. They were very interested in me because in, the, in late 2010, Obama was talking about raising the capital gains tax, and these guys figured that if they could sell the building in 2010, uh, they would save a tremendous amount of money, about a hundred grand, right? Was was going to be the difference between fifteen and whatever it was going to be, twenty percent was going to be an increase. So uh, they said to me, you know, uh, you know, they're trying to get me to give them a number, and I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not in the mood to negotiate. I said, I need to move quick. I want to buy this building right now before the year's over. I said, so you guys go back to your board, come back to me with the absolute best number you can give me. So they came back after about a week with this number. And they said one million eight hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. <laughs> so um, I have a private investor who was working with me on this deal, and him and I have known each other a long time. I write about him in my book a lot. His name's Vlad, and uh, him and I we we like to sometimes uh, you know have a little fun when we're out there buying commercial buildings. So we waited a week or two before we responded. We called him up and 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 we said. Um, we're gonna offer you 1.4 million dollars. Well, they, they hit the roof, you know. What the, you told us, you, what the hell? You said, give us your best number, and you're gonna say yes or no. I said, well, yeah, this is my way of saying no. <laughs> so, make a long story short, I didn't get the building, but I am perfectly fine with that, because if I couldn't get it at that 1.4 million dollar number, then I don't want it. And it's not that I'm going around lowballing everything. I would have been very proud to own that building, but I can't take those kind of chances. I can't take the chance of owning it at one million eight hundred seventy-five thousand. I did the calculations. I know what I'm doing. I could take the risk at one point four million. I wasn't willing to take the risk at any number higher than that. Hmm. They can do whatever they want with the building. They, they've assured me that they've sold this building. Yet I drive by it all the time, and it looks exactly the way it was the last day I was there. So I don't know. The point to this is, I go around, I look at buildings, I call people about buildings all the time, I call the signs, I talk to people in the industry, and I put out offers, and, and I'll get one the way that I uh, want it, or I won't. So, <clears throat> um, I, that's the commercial arena, what I'm doing with it right now. Because I'm in the office building arena, I have to be a little careful right now, because my main clients are small businesses. Small businesses are hurting pretty bad right now. And until I see some changes in this country's uh, philosophies from our politicians about how they feel about taxes and how they <coughs> feel about our small business entrepreneurs in this world, I'm going to be careful about making a big multi-million dollar move. Right? So you're going to find out tonight with the 2020 vision what I am doing because I don't want to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. I really want to be buying big office buildings. I'd love it for me and Alan to go out and have him find me three giant office buildings to buy. Who didn't turn off their cell phone? <laughs> um, I'd love to go out and buy a bunch of office buildings right now, but I can't take that chance, right? Going bankrupt is, is not a, an option I want to explore anymore. If you read my book, you'll find out I flirted with, with, with disaster more than one occasion because wow. of my aggressive style running around buying $2.1 million buildings with 10000 in the bank. That could get you in a little trouble sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so this is my website. Uh, people can buy the book there by clicking on the book. But the real thing I want to show you is I got this web TV show that I'm putting together. I release television episodes once a week. Just put your name and email address up here. I put out more free information about how to be real estate investors. 
and, and about the things that I'm doing that anybody will ever meet. I've had a radio show on ESPN. I'm out speaking all over the Delaware Valley, all over the place. There's a picture of me with, with Ron LeGrand right there. And uh, we're going to move through some of these pretty quick here. Uh, this is a, a version of my one of my web TV shows. It's called The State of the Union. When I went down to Washington, D.C. to set, set those, uh, those bozos straight about what's wrong with this country and how they don't understand the real estate. You can check it out on the front page of my, uh, of my website. And uh, this is another show I made, kind of like Donald Trump's Apprentice. <laughs> These two young guys were calling me all the time. Phil, how do I do this? Phil, how do I do that? I said, I had enough of this. I said, you keep asking me the same questions over and over again. So we had this, we had this um, uh, Apprentice TV show where we gave them assignments to do, and they had to go out and do them. And uh, if you sign up for the show soon, you'll get to see the next installment of this episode and find out what these young punks are up to. <laughs> um, I also, if you sign up for my web TV show, you get free investor forms. Uh, as soon as you sign up for it, you'll get a uh, confirmation link. After you hit that confirmation link, you'll be able to download some of these forms. This is a form that I use to analyze uh, residential property. When I, uh, when I get somebody on the phone and I'm talking to them about buying their house, uh, this has all the questions you need to ask them. And if you use the same form for every property that you're checking out on the phone, uh, it makes it really easy for you to decipher which one is the best house. Mm -hmm. So you get 10 phone calls in a week, different houses, you just fill out these forms and you talk to people, and then you uh, very easily can decipher which ones require the, you know, which ones deserve your energy. So uh, this is also a form that I created. It's, it's called the Equity Tracking Chart. And years ago, uh, I started to learn and suspect that mortgage companies couldn't be trusted to keep track of how much money uh, they were applying towards the principal and interest of the properties that I own. Especially when you get a large portfolio, it's pretty easy to miss on this. So I created this chart so that when a statement comes in each month, I enter the, the bill into uh, my QuickBooks, and then I go right to my equity tracking chart and I write how much principal was applied, what is the outstanding uh, amount owed on this house, what is the interest that's being charged each month? I enter it in here, and this chart quickly calculates for you your net worth, and it also <coughs> calculates for you uh, uh, how much you are picking up in appreciation each month and everything. So uh, if, you've, if you've been in this business for a while, what happens is you become equity rich and cash poor. Okay? And what's important about this is it gives you a snapshot, so you actually see that you're getting richer. It may be slow in years like this, but you're getting richer. Okay. So that's one of the things that I get out of it. It gives me inspiration. And you can get this for free when you sign up for my web TV show. Okay, so here's something, I, and a little idea that changed my life. I like to share it with people real quick. Uh, I call it, you know, it's the theory of association. I'm like 25 years old, and uh, I get this audio tape, and it says, the theory of association. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you hang around with people who go bowling and drink a lot of beer, chances are that your bowling average is going to go up and so is your waistline, all right? But if you hang around with people who buy real estate and are, are motivated individuals who are trying to become more successful in the world, the same thing will happen to you, right? And, I, and, and the idea just resonated with me. A bell went off in my head and I said, that's it, that's for me. Hmm. The hard part to this, <clears throat> to this theory was that um, I had to disassociate with all the people who had a negative effect on me. So the first thing I did was I got rid of every friend that I had. <laughs> every one of them, I had to. But uh, I found myself with no friends, so I decided to take back one guy who was marginally acceptable. So I had one friend now, and he had a friend who I hardly knew, but I knew uh, of him and that he was having some success. So I called him up, told him about the theory of association, said, look, I need some friends, I want to be your friend. I started hanging, he thought it was funny. He, he was a realtor, and I happened to be, I was buying a, uh, getting ready to buy a house, and I didn't have my real estate license back then, so he helped me find a property. Make a long story short, this guy taught me a technique of how to buy houses with no money down, which I later uh, twisted and tweaked and changed it to be my own technique, and which I called uh, the all money down technique, which I write about in my book. And I use this technique to buy dozens and dozens of properties, so I can literally look back on my life the day I heard about this silly theory, and it had a you know upward surging effect on my uh, financial status, my happiness, and my career choices, and everything else. 
So I'd love to share this idea with people that I hope it may have an effect on somebody else here too. Uh, I also uh, filmed my web TV show in this green screen studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have this for rent. If anybody has any kind of business and you want to put a video about your business on your website, your new buddy, Phil Falcone, will <laughs> rent you this studio for only 50 bucks. If you, 50 bucks an hour. If you know how to make videos, you can just go in there with your own cameraman, use the green screen, and you're out of there for 50 bucks. If you need help making the video, I can come in and help you. I can film it for you, I can edit it for you, I can show you how to do it. That's going to cost you more, depending on what you want to do. But if you don't have video today on your website, you're living in the dark ages, okay? You really got a video is the way to do it. You can make a video about anything you do for a living, okay? And you could drop off the face of the earth, and people will still be buying whatever you're selling two years from now off of that video, all right? Yeah. It's great. I've made hundreds of them, and I pump them out all over the world, everywhere I go, everything I do, video, video, video. If you sign up for my web TV show, you'll get to see some of the stuff that I'm doing. When I'm speaking, I make a video, I send it out to the list. When I have something that I wanna uh, tell people about what I'm doing, something exciting, I make a video, right? It's so much more effective. Nobody wants to read a story about anything. They just wanna, they wanna see the video. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, <coughs> this picture here is very valuable, very valuable. Whenever you're bidding on a piece of property and someone says to you, send me proof of funds, okay? You just send them this picture. <laughs> They'll call you up and go, what the hell is that? I said, I told you it's a cash offer. You know? It's a cash offer on a property. Here's your proof of funds. What the hell you want? You know? What do you want to come over and smell it? I mean, there it is. It's there. Okay. <coughs> Give it a try. It's worth a, it's worth a good laugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things that I do is I'm addicted to real estate, okay? So I take this business to a higher level than a lot of landlords do. I own a piece of property, and uh, what I like to tell people is this. Your typical landlord, he's got an apartment for rent, and um, somebody comes along to rent the apartment, and he closes the deal, he gets the money, he signs the lease, and he's so proud of himself. He's walking right out the door, and I tell landlords all the time, you got to stop right there, man, because you're leaving a lot of money on the table. What I call multiple profit generators, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many other ways that you can make money on top of the rent. I call them multiple profit generators. Here are just a few examples. In my book, there's like 50 of them, and I talk in detail about how I did it. Coin-operated washers and dryers. Any of my buildings that coin-operated washers and dryers can go in, they're there. Anywhere I can stick a vending machine, they're there. Mac machines, anywhere I can put them, okay? Direct TV, think about this. Suppose you own a small apartment building. Just stop and ask yourself, what is the one thing that everyone in this building is gonna get? They're gonna get cable, right? Who the hell doesn't have cable anymore? Does anyone here not have cable? This guy and my grandmother. That's it. 